Well, good day, everybody. This is Chris, the Ancient Scholar, and today I'd like to do a quick practice run-through of a static cardiology uh, scenario and show you guys kind of how it's done. All right, so remember, we've got four strips and scenarios and six minutes to look at these and interpret them, so let's go ahead and get started. So, strip one here. All right. You're caring for a hemodynamically stable, alert 48-year-old female who complains of feeling dizzy. Okay, so we've got a wide, complex tachycardia that's regular here. So this is ventricular tachycardia, stable patient, right? So what does everybody get? IV, O2, monitor, H's and T's, transport, reassessment. In addition to that, we would consider vagal maneuvers and it administer a denizen to this patient. All right, moving on to the next one. You are caring for a 28-year-old female who's hit by a car while crossing the street. She is currently pulseless and apneic. Okay, so we have an organized rhythm here, and uh, this patient is pulseless and apneic. What does that make this? Uh, do not get fooled into saying that this is uh, some sort of um, um, heart block, which it, it is, but remember, an organized rhythm no pulse makes this PEA. This is pulseless electrical activity, right? So, IV, O2, monitor, H's and T's, reassess, transport, start CPR, administer epinephrine one milligram, IV push every three to five minutes. And you've got all your bases covered there. Okay, next one. Uh, you're caring for a 52 year old male with sudden onset chest pain that is crushing and retrosternal. The patient is pale and diaphoretic with a blood pressure of 100 over 50. Oh no, this is a 12 lead. We got a little more going on here. So remember what we talked about, I see all leads. Let's start inferior, two, three AVF. What do we see here? We see ST elevation, right? All right, so I've got a STEMI, um, and then uh, that's inferior wall. C, septal wall, V1 and V2. I've got some depression there. Um, could be posterior involvement, uh, uh, more likely could be posterior wall involvement there. Uh, V3 and V4, I've got some depression there in the anterior leads and then leads, lateral wall, V5, V6, 1, and AVL. I've got some depression, but that's probably reciprocal to the inferior wall here, right? So what's the main problem? I've got an inferior wall STEMI with a possible posterior involvement. All right, so what do we want to do? IV, O2, monitor, uh, reassess, transport. Okay, in this case, we um, are going to call for a code heart, right? Get this patient to a cath lab. We're going to hold off on any other agents that will impact preload or blood pressure, right? Blood pressure is a little low. All right, so we're going to hold off on nitro, and I'm going to get a V4R, right? This is an inferior wall, STEMI. We're concerned about right ventricular infarction, so we're gonna get a V4R, and we're gonna get posterior leads to verify the presence of posterior uh, wall STEMI, right? Listen to the patient's lung sounds. If they're clear, we go ahead and uh, give uh, some small fluid challenges to increase preload and help with the blood pressure. And then as long as a patient is awake and oriented and swallowing appropriately, we'll go ahead and give some aspirin as well. And we've got that covered. All right, moving on to the next strip. You're caring for a 48-year-old female who complains of being unable to move uh, the right side of her body while sitting down for lunch approximately 20 minutes ago. The patient has a blood pressure of 150 over 100. Okay, so uh, what do we got here? First thing, we have got an irregularly irregular rhythm with uh, a wavy baseline here. Okay, so um, we've got atrial fibrillation, right? This is atrial fibrillation. And IV, O2, monitor, reassess, H's and T's, transport this patient. All right, um, some special information here on the right side. We know that AFib is associated with uh, increased risk of stroke, so we're gonna do a stroke assessment. Um, we're gonna call for a stroke alert, get this patient to a stroke uh, center. Um, otherwise, we're just going to uh, monitor them, right? There's nothing specific that we need to do here with, with with the rhythm, so we've got all of our bases covered, and there you go, uh, and that's it. And in less than six minutes, I've identified, I've appropriately identified all the major uh, dysrhythmias, and I have also um, 
verbalize the significant uh, therapies that I need to cover in these patients and, and we're good to go. Hopefully you found this uh, exercise helpful and hopefully you can see how I can put all the stuff that we've talked about together and we can package it in one scenario and just kind of get it out there and get it done rather quickly. Okay guys, um, if you found this uh, helpful, maybe um, just in the comments, if, if, if you want, go ahead and let me know and maybe we can do a couple more practice runs uh, with different rhythms and 12 leads and etc. Um, but we'll see what the response is to this video. Okay guys, as always, thanks for hanging in there.